Welcome to the case of the serialized killer. A semi-supernatural murder mystery, where ghosts are fake, but inner demons are quite real. A uh, visual novel with point-and-click investigation elements. Uh, an entry for the third annual Spooktober visual novel game jam by Team Imagibros. About a disgraced demonologist hired to summon the ghost of a popular illustrator. And a mystery ensues. That in mind, let's dive right in. The doors were all locked, and the windows barred. The afternoon sun barely managed to leak into the dusty mansion. When the visitor knocked, the sharp sound resonated through the halls. Somewhere, inaudible over the knocking, a pitiful voice let out a groan and called out into the hallway. Clumsy hands pulled a pillow over his face. Ah, oh, that's so loud. I swear I can see it. If it doesn't stop, this headache will crack my skull in two. Well, one man complained, another was already rushing to answer the door. You have a hangover, not a headache. Have mercy, Holly. I can't handle this today. You couldn't handle this yesterday. I don't think you'll have a lobster's chance in boiling water of handling it tomorrow. Unsympathetic, but undeterred, Holly Faraday made his way towards the front door. He ignored the other speaker and their continued whining. He sighed. The moaning wouldn't stop until the knocking did, and Faraday would have to be the one to take care of it. Opening up the door was quite a task. He muttered through a devious set of tongue-twisting charms. He cracked a stick of chalk over the handle. I detached a frankly ludicrous amount of deadbolts that... Any interest in the novelty of ritual magic had worn off months ago. The seal broke and crisp air entered, full of the staticky flavor of fall. Holly blinked as his eyes adjusted. He hadn't missed all that sunlight nor the serious, stiffy, disapproving faces of people on the outside. The messenger was standing in the step, letter in hand. Whoever had sent it had paid to have it hand-delivered. Urgent letter for Mr. Lid... Uh, Mr. Lid... Lid... Gale? Holly raised an eyebrow. They'd paid to have it hand-delivered. But not, it seemed, enough to know the recipient. Ludi Kale. Ludicale. Comprehension, comprehension seemed to dawn on the messenger's face, quickly followed by the inevit inevitable grimace of distaste. Oh, I see. Hmm. Faraday took a letter from his hand, gave it the once over. It's not a bomb, is it? That got the jerk's attention. Hey, no, sir, it's a personal invitation. Really? I'll toss my oars. Thanks. Holly rummaged in his pocket for a tip, and once that transaction was accomplished, set about resealing the door. He didn't, want to, he didn't want to be responsible for anything escaping. Soon, the business was accomplished. All that was left was to find out what was in the letter. Harry! Quieter, please. You should get up. Open your mail yourself. If there's money in it, I'm gonna want that. Keep it. Holly pantomimed opening the letter. Opening the letter. Ah, it's the deed to this whole place. All I have to do is sign, and it's all mine. Keep it. The outburst clearly backfired, and another groan of anguish rolled down the hall. Holly wrote his rolled his eyes and tore open the elaborately de decorated envelope. He scanned the lines of the letter. It's an invitation to a party. They want you to do a seance. If he'd been, if he'd been expecting this to perk up his companion's spirits, then the response would have been quite the disappointment. I won't do it. Done two before, and it's also terribly demeaning. 
two stocking-clad feet met the ground. Then one of those feet failed to keep balance. And the ground became acquainted with a pair of elbows and a forehead splat. They ought to just a taste this parlor trick. He clawed his way up the door frame, and, Her and Harold Ludic Ludicale stood as tall as they momentarily could. How dare they, speaking to a true alchemical genius. What? Ah, yes. Man who can control the fabric, fabric of the human soul. Holly fluttered the letter at him. Why don't you try controlling the fabric of fabric of your pants, buddy? Harold took one moment to register his state of undress. And that moment was all it took to puncture what little energy he had. Oh, hey, that as it may, neither I nor anyone could show up and summon the souls of the dead. Their regrets are outstanding grievances. Perhaps I could summon those. Any vengeful presence strong enough to contact it might kill the whole lot of them rather than shake the table. Only sighed again. Maybe it would have been better to leave Harold passed out on the, cha on the chaise lounge. After all, Harold couldn't be pedantic while passed out on the chaise lounge. I'll tell this bell person you said no, then. Harold waved a personal gesture. Good, good. Don't call me unless the big ones escape. It took a while for anything to make filter through the muck in his brain, as a neuron finally made contact. Harold tripped again. Bell? As in Bernadette Bell? The author? Holy caught both Harold and the suddenly wild look in his eye. The, the famous author? Yes. Managing both Harold and the letter was certainly a handful, but Holly managed to reread the latter, which was to say, the letter. It says, Professor Ludicale, I request your presence at a party at my home this coming Saturday. I have heard tell of your incredible research into the supernal sciences. I need a man with your experience for the job. You can trust no one else with this important task. My regards, Bernadette Bell. Harold got to his feet, brushing himself off. Well, it would be the pinnacle of rudeness to decline. So, will, so will you be, bring business cards to this? Will you just pass out slips labeled kiss ass so they know your real job? <laughs> Harold shook his head, hangover suddenly absent. How do you not know Bell? He's been serialized for two whole years now. Writes those murder mysteries with a shockingly grisly means of death. Holly shrugged. The associate of hers was just murdered a few days ago. The irony kept it all over the papers. They have no leads at all. Claiming an imp might have been the murder weapon. It's creepy to obsess about other people's business. You never know when you might need that information. We wouldn't want to make a faux pas if we met her. Fine, I guess that settles it. Even if you, even if you just said seances were fake. I mean, it's more complicated than that. Even if there's very little evidence that they're real. You never know what we might find out there in the future. That's a longer way to say fake. So? You want a good ghost story for the party? What's wrong with that? It's... well, it's not deceptive, per se. It's fun for the guests if we all pretend it's real. That's the idea. Holly chuckled. Well, then I'm coming with you. Seeing you lie your ass off sounds like a show I don't want to miss. Plus, they said there'll be dinner. I haven't got to eat something I didn't cook myself in ages. Harold chewed the inside of his cheek for a moment before responding. Just promise me you won't embarrass me. Now, me? With you running around playing pretend about fake ghosts for a scrap of establishment acknowledgement, you really think I'm going to be the embarrassing one? I don't exactly know how to dress. Says the man in the... Holly didn't see fit to dignify that with a response. He turned around and left Harold standing. In the hall. In his undergarments. No more need said on that such <laughs>
A week later, Faraday and Harold stood dwarfed by the massive mansion of Bernadette Bell. Whoa. Thank goodness I brought this big jar of salt. Uh, thank goodness I brought the big jar of salt. This place is going to need a lot to seal. If you're going to be faking the ghost thing, why bother sealing anything? I'm a professional, Holly. I am at least capable of sealing a building until sunrise. Sure you can stay up that late. Stepping onto the front porch, their feet passed over a metal grate. A strange device on the floor set off a ringing tone inside the house. Do you think that's an imp doorbell? That seems excessive. Not to mention expensive. Or maybe the place is rigged up with electricity. She must be even richer than I thought. How do I look? Fine. I really wish you'd have dressed in something nicer. This is the nicest stuff I have. Plus, it's not like clothes change who you are. Either they'll like you or they won't. Just say I'm your assistant. They won't care then. So you read a few of her books this week, right? Well, I... I've read a bit. Define a bit. I fell asleep on the third page. I usually like seafaring stories, but it was so dreary. Well, attempt was made. Don't look at me like that. There's going to be a play soon. I'll simply watch that when it comes out. Yeah. <laughs> but the short stories are good. I'm certain that they are. You tell me all about how the book was better once we've seen the show. And look, the first one sucks. She's clearly never been on a boat before. That. Well, they get a lot better. I wanted to come prepared, so I read a few. It takes a little bit to get into the series, but, uh... There was the sound of a movement behind the door. It gets good after the third... After the third book, I promise. Oh. The host herself, Bernadette Bell, opened the door. A stern figure stood behind her. Oh. Oh, it's Dr. Ludicale. I'm sorry to keep you waiting. I haven't been feeling up to snuff lately. It's no trouble, Miss Bell. And please, call me Harold. Harold it is, then. I'm glad you could make it. Might have been rather short notice, but for you, anything. That yeah. was confessed to being something of a fan. Ah, yes, that's the uh, piece of paper with Mr. Kissass written on it. Yeah. All he knows. Really? Yeah. <laughs> Called out. This is my assistant. Holy Faraday. I don't worry, I understand how valuable good help is. This is my editor, Debbie Vance. Vance extended her wrist towards Harold. Her dress and demeanor were both firmly rooted in the prior century. I was the one who told her about your work. Harold, no stranger to dusty old customs, kissed the back of Vance's hand. A pleasure to meet you both. Come on in, don't just stand out here. We get started as soon as everyone else has arrived. Miss Bell, I need some time, you know, to prepare. Now that you've kept this whole thing very mysterious, it suits a mystery writer like yourself. I do need to know whom I'll be summoning. My friend, Gareth Canterbury. Such a Recent death might be difficult to summon. If you can't do it, then please tell me now. Hmm? I... I meant for an amateur, it would be impossible. I'm no amateur, I'm a professional, I'm a bloody doctor. For an experienced summoner like me, it shouldn't be a problem. Faraday leaned in to whisper. Harry, how the hell are you going to fake? Held his back softly, not now. Ever heard of hot reading? Caleb puffed his chest out confidently like a proper cunning showman. We need to uh, get a list of all the deceased's personal traits and attachments so we can contact her properly. Faraday, take some notes for me. Ah. We're just gonna fl flat out get to know her. Harry thrust a little bit leather bound journal into his hands. Wait, wait, this notebook is. 
heard him written a bit coarsely. And he folded to a new page and started to write. Sometimes... Sometimes Faraday will take notes of the people around him. These notes can be accessed any time by clicking the journal icon to the right of the text box. Will these notes be kept here? Having the journal, those will return to the game. Ex Libris, holding Faraday. I found please return to Harold Ludica. Oh, this is cool. Gareth Canterbury, she here, friend of Bell, recently murdered. Popular illustrator, worked for the chain. It's liked by her bosses, tells it like it is. Holly Faraday? Him? Un undiscovered demonologist? Incredible work. My assistant professor. Don't say his name around the docks. Cute smile. Yay? He likes mulled cider. Ask him out for a drink. Apologize. Ask him to come back. Shut up, coward. Shut up. Holly and Howard are, uh. having discussions in his. Journal entry, I suppose. Uh, cute smile. Yeah, correct. You're not wrong. That's cute. Belle turned to Vance for a moment, and while she was distracted, Faraday hissed and whispered to Harold. Harry, why are there notes on me? That Oh, well, I started assembling all of my notes on people into one notebook. Easy to keep on hand. Holly rolled his eyes, and sarcasm dripped from his tone. Oh, of course, that makes perfect sense. And no, it doesn't. Most people don't think to keep an insane little dossier of everyone they pass by. Well, my memory isn't what it used to be. If I slip up and say something that accidentally touches upon a sore nerve, and they never forgive me. Faraday took to furious scribbling. Harold looked over Holly's shoulder and watched him write. Oh, very mature. Holly Raddit adds snores to his sleep to your page. Ah. <laughs> Bell's laughter cut through their squabble. Don't you agree, Harold? Absolutely. Quite amusing. I have no clue what you're talking about, but I agree because you're rich. Oh, Harold. Yim. Orientation. Desperate. <laughs> Jerk. Usually intoxicated and moping. One of the most influential demonologists of this era, but has no motivation. His house is full of nightmares that are a pain in the ass to deal with, but he's the most notable one. Nightmare or pain in the ass? To be decided. How had no idea what she'd been discussing with Vance. People always liked to hear that they were funny. Miss Bell, I hate to divert you back to a sensitive subject. Could you tell me a little about your friend's career? It's important that I know what might tie her to this mortal plane. Belle didn't miss a beat, pride in her eyes as she responded. She was a fabulous illustrator. She worked on cover art for the chain. Faraday leaned towards Harold to whisper. The chain is the journal. It's the journal her stories are serialized in. So would you say she liked her job? Loved it. She and I would head out to find scenes for her to paint. I did some rough drafting. She and I met, with, met when we had to illustrate something for one of my stories for the cover. I took a lot of pride in her work, and some people even collected the journals just for their covers. Quite a feat to say. Sometimes the journals sold just because of her artwork. She wasn't well liked by the heads of the journal. She just told it like it is. Management always hates that. I just, want to, I just wanted to be clear. Maybe the job didn't love her as much as she loved it. I suppose. In the parlor, there were two guests already chatting away. Oh, hello. Rather, one of them was endlessly, excitedly prattling on. I like you already. Oh. Well, the other loomed, silent. Faraday and Harold attempted not to stare. They failed, utterly. Bella followed their gazes and chimed in. May I present Goose Downey? They're here to help me with some details about future writing ideas. They're a hitman. Hmm. Inspiration is vital for a good story. Who would know more about a murder than, than that? 
Uh, so tacky. Faraday took a note of that. Doorbell rang, and Belle grabbed Vance's hand. Ooh, another guest! With that, Belle hurried Vance away, sounding slightly winded. Hmm. Finally! I was starting to think it would just be me and this guy all night. The taller person said nothing. But the lack of response did not seem to slow the woman down. So, what do we have here? Two of you, right? Was it just one person with a really big imp? Oh. Oh. Uh, no, it's two of us. So you can speak. Well, that's helpful. Uh, yes, I'm Dr. Harold Ludicare. I'll be performing the seance this evening. And she wasn't kidding when she said she was getting an expert. Harold beamed. Pride swelling. Ego ballooning. Shame it had to be you, though. Harold deflated. And just who do you think you are? Harold did his best to shush Faraday. The woman heard him anyway and could scarcely hold back a pearl peal of arrogant laughter. Hmm? I do that? Ah, Bernard Bell. My toast writes the popular Constance Little Bear. Series of mysteries. Harry, if you're if you're reading this, the train one is great. Goose Downey? They them hitman? Here for Bill's research? Concerning. Me? I'm dear dear Deleuze. Harry gave an audible groan of groan of disappointment. Which only served to make her grin even more broadly. Yep, that Deleuze. If you've seen a ship with our marking, then I designed it. Even if you haven't seen the marking. We made half the ships in the harbor. So you know. You're welcome. For, like, all the free trade you enjoy each day. Uh, Faraday gritted his teeth and decided not to let the shipwright get away with the slight. Big deal, so he made one or two. <sighs> a hundred. Ships, are good for you. I've been one... I've been on better. Ooh, a big words, mister. It's Faraday. Holy Faraday. The loose shrugged. Never heard of you. Heard he sucked in a breath to tell Deleuze exactly who he was. But I held up to the hand and gave him a desperate, pleading look. Then he looked down at the journal, silent, but sullenly. Holly crossed his arms, but said nothing. Harry turned to the taller fellow, hoping to have a little more luck with them. Hello, a pleasure to meet you. Figure gave the slightest of nods. Harry's mind had half a dozen different reasons why Goose might choose to commit this social slight. And how each of them was probably his own fault. Fair enough. He was so wrapped up in the preemptive guilt that he almost missed it when, he, when they did speak. Hey. A great listener, this one. I was just telling them about how marriage is a scam. Hal did not have time to ask what could have caused such a topic to come up. He just got straight to nodding. Yes, yes, spending your life with just one person would be so limiting. Hmm. I, dis I disagree. Commitment is nice. Uh, uh, that's not to say that life partnership uh, doesn't have its upsides. Faraday rolled his eyes. <sighs> You're getting dizzy over there. And Mr. Luce, did you happen to know anything about Gareth Canterbury? Just that she died and people keep talking about it. De Deleuze gave a carefree shrug. How about you, Goosey? Wasn't me. Hmm. Outside the room, there was a, l a lilting, melodic cry of joy. Deleuze's head turned attentively. Please tell me that's who it sounds like it is. The sound of fawning excitement traveled down the hall before long the host and the next guest appeared. Oh. Hello. Oh. The door swung open, revealing a figure swathed in pink silks and sheer beaded fabric. Her eyes shone with abundant delight. Harold gave a slight gasp of enthusiasm. It's Clarice Myers. Uh, who? If you can't take an interest in current events, we'll never have anything to talk about. You talk about the current state of mold in your kitchen. Oh, your parlor is beautiful. 
Is the inspiration for Duchess Baker's parlor? How could you tell? I've been rereading all of her scenes. The way the bookshelf is positioned, and the pattern of the chair. Ah, yes, I picture her scheming all of her nefarious plots right in that chair over there. The energetic young lady crossed the room to run her hand along the fabric of the arm. Oh, it gives me a perfectly wicked vibe. Can I sit in it? You certainly can. The young lady settled into the chair. And the innocent features of her face... I contorted into a sinister glare. He threw back her head and gave a laugh so chilling. Goosebumps rose in the back of Faraday's neck. That's quite convincing. Oh, <laughs> Try as you might, for as long as you live. You'll never prove it was me, a constant little bear. Belle's jaw dropped. Exactly how I imagined her. I love it. You could play her in the stage play. Miss Myers, I think you're disturbing the other guests. The young lady hopped up from the chair, eyes once again wide and apologetic. I'm so sorry, everyone. I'm just so thrilled to see it for myself. No, no, Debbie, stop being such a spoil sport. Miss Myers, I couldn't have asked the director to cast a better duchess. Oh, she literally is playing the duck. Is playing the villain in the play. Yeah, are you kidding? A preview performance right here? Sounds like she knows how to party. Unlike the rest of you chumps. Dee De De poked Goose in the knee with her cane. When are you going to start doing an evil laugh? That seems like something a real hitman would have. No, I think he's got the... Uh, I, think, I think they've got the hitman vibe down pretty well, I'd say. Serious values, com values commitment. Uh, eh, it's pretty solid. Better if they don't hear you coming. Uh, ah. Oh. This guy is starting to creep me out. Shh! Don't let them hear you. Bell and Myers, however, were still off in their little world, falling over each other. Oh, I hate to be a bother, but Miss Bell, can I please, please, please have you sign this copy of the chain? I have all of them with your stories in them, but this one is my favorite. Constance racing to solve the murder before the train pulls into the next station. All while knowing she might be found by the conductor. So thrilling. Bell took the less than pristine magazine. Now clipped a gleaming bronze fountain pen from her pocket. Her signature was large and loopy in, in a striking indigo ink. I use this pen for all my manuscripts, too. This ink just seems like it makes my pen flow faster. Meyer's eyes sparkled with admiration as she took the signed copy back. She stared in awe as if she had just seen magic. They all seemed to remember that the rest of the guests were there. Hey. Oh, let me introduce. Miss Clarice. Clarice Myers. Loved you with that one with the flower girl and the, ele and the elocution lessons. Luce hopped to the front of the group, quickly shaking Myers' hand. Didn't think you had a villain in you, but you sure proved me wrong. Oh, thank you. I promise I can be very evil when I want to be. Hmm. <laughs> As Bell introduced the rest of them, Faraday used the free moment to take a couple more notes. Trade one is great. That's one she's describing. Bill's research? Dea. Oh, thank you for that, Harry. Dea Deleuze. She, her? Chipwright thinks she's so special because she's economically noteworthy. <laughs> Clearly. Vance looked over Clarice. Finally giving an approving nod. Oh. My dear, are you wearing your imp in your hat? Oh yes, I'm awfully glad that someone noticed. It's all the fashion uptown. Watch. Oh, a small creature rose from her hat, and quietly, with the poise of a, ba of a ballerina, began to dance. Clarice Myers sang, 
crystalline soprano weaving a hauntingly pretty melody. Others all stopped what they were doing, crowded around to watch them perform. Vance smiled, and Deleuze stopped fidgeting. Little Imp moved with grace, elegance, and far too many joints. After a moment, however... <laughs> Harold crossed the room quickly, pulling chalk from his jacket pocket. Miss, allow me to. Myers did not let a hint of awkwardness or effrontery show. Oh, dear, don't mind. That happens all the time. See? She can make a new one. Uh? Little Imp placed a tiny hand to its cheek, as if laughing off embarrassment. Its mask reformed. Is it the chalk that had an effect on him? Ah, what a clever little, what a clever little trick! The imp bowed, then hid back away, back among the flowers of Meyer's hat. Harold slunk back over to Faraday's side. Do you think it's okay? Though he had whispered, Deleuze must have been feeling particularly nosy because she chirped up for all to hear. Of course she's okay. Everyone's imps do weird stuff sometimes. Doesn't mean anything. Quite right. One look at that beautiful imp, and one can easily tell that it harbors a beautiful soul. Imp being, uh, inner demon? Imp is a, imp is a pure expression of an artist's creative drive, her ability. One shouldn't trivialize it. There was general agreement amidst the room, and the others took to chatting. Hmm. Harold wandered over to the far corner. What if he could summon something that could drag him off straight off the face of the earth? Is that really what people think nowadays? That imps are their creativity? Their souls? Break them out for fun little shows? You... You were gone for a while, Howley. You did all that for search, and the public just traded one lie for another. Look, this journal you've got me writing in. It's my old notebook. Just open it up and show them my notes. And leave it be. Her imp is advanced, to be sure. Maybe nothing will happen. Try to tell them this darling of a stage has a demon. She uses it like this. It'll make it stronger and more dangerous. Be marked and maybe even forcibly removed. Be responsible for at least trying to correct them. If someone gets hurt, we say nothing. Faraday was no stranger to Harold's haggard, tired expressions. As Harold, Harold looked at him, his eyes communicated a fatigue so deep it would have taken years to accumulate. I hate this city. They'd eat a rock if you told them it was an oyster. All these notes on imps and demons are available to read. Oh, okay. I should have a good time. So to summarize the points for the presentation, demons aren't just the big monsters that look in the woods or destroy small villages. Everyone might even have a really tiny demon running around, hiding their keys or eating their socks or something. Humans contribute to them by via negative emotions. The difference between a harmless or harmful demon is how powerful we let them get. What if, pause for effect, we, put, we could put the demons someplace where they can't feed off of us? Professor Ludicale has developed a system for capturing renegade or stray demons. We can use ceiling algae to confine demons to objects or locations. But we absolutely must take responsibility for our own demons. Professor's goal is to, for each person to have the option to seal their own demon deep within themselves. Professor has already successfully done this on two people. Two photographs of my eyes have very the professor comment on his own suppression once it's done. Let's get that funding! Kickstarter.com uh, Slash Ludicale Meeting went too well. I refused to treat the process as a medical procedure talked about rebranding demons. Harry said that we should be open to whatever the get that whatever gets us the fundings we that we need. I'm not going to lie these assholes anymore for money. 
Screw this. Manifesting your inner demons based on your negative emotions. But, so it seems what they're dealing with here. They developed a procedure to seal your inner demon into an object. As a test basis, but... Also, as a further step, to seal it deep within yourself to keep it suppressed. But they looked at the whole, uh, seal your inner demon in, object, in an object and thought, uh, Cool personal trinket! And they ran with it, and... So, the professor and, uh, Polly are... Uh, left in the aftermath as the ones responsible for this fad. But knowing that it's worse than that and just people refuse to be refuse to pay attention to the truth because cool fad. Any more about... There's Clarice. Stage actress, big fan of Belle, evil laugh, maniacal laugh. She's gonna make a killer Duchess Baker. Hmm. So her inner demon is, looks like it's sealed within, like, I could describe that thing. It looks like the uh, dancing ballerina on the top of a music box almost. Obviously, her inner demon is somewhat related to her stage presence, so to speak. Doorbell rang once again. It summoned Belle and Vance away, but left Clarice to admire the room more deeply. Miss Myers, do you know anything about Gareth Canterbury? Oh, she was Miss Belle's friend who was murdered. Terrible how the papers keep sensationalizing it and hounding her for interviews. She clearly has nothing to do with it. And yet they're harassing her just because she's famous and writes about murders. All just to sell papers. It's so heartbreaking. Thank you. It's disgusting that people want to wring money out of other people's tragedies. Dreadful. I feel so sorry for Miss Belle. I hope you will all be gentle with her feelings tonight. She's probably trying to take her mind off that whole thing. Holly clicked his tongue. I don't think she is. She hired me to summon her ghost. That seems so ghoulish. Hello. I, literally. Whoa. This party is getting better every minute. And it will only prove now that I'm here, gorgeous. Let's see if I got this voice right. Group turn to see the new arrival. I'm admittedly intrigued, but that's some big talk. A man waltzed into the room with the utmost confidence. Okay, could be. Oh, hello there. He sported coffered hair. Coiffed hair? A lilac waistcoat that was so out of style it bordered on a kind of archaic chic. And so many angles. And a pair of long, tapered ears. Faraday barely noticed the others enter the room. Vance supported a slightly winded bell on her arm, helping her into a chair. Oh? Being too bored would literally kill me, so I'm very motivated. Oh, your ears! Are you a fae? I've only heard about them in books! What do his ears look like? Dea prodded Ghost again with her cane, prompting them on. Cute. Subjective descriptions don't help. <laughs> They're pointy. And very charming. Charming is subjective. Nonsense. Charming subjectively very, very me. I'm lupine flowers. I know it isn't every day you meet a fae. Vance squinted at Lupine. Hmm. I don't actually remember inviting you. I wasn't invited, but I thought that was rude. Such a collection of adorable people and me not invited. A shame. Plus, I was friends with Canterbury. Gary was good to me, 
I found out you were going to be contacting her tonight. It felt me romantic, but I couldn't miss the last chance at seeing her. It couldn't hurt. Well, if you're certain... Debbie, shouldn't you know better than anyone else and have to turn away a fae? Nonsense. As an expert, I know that the fae are all sweet, adorable, wholesome creatures. They are born amidst the cabbage patch and tenderly rock the children to sleep at night. Uh... Uh... Oh, well... Uh, well... Uh. <laughs> <laughs> Where did you get that nonsense? Sounds like something out of a Deborah Vane storybook. Uh. Hmm. Well, uh, can you get dinner started, Debbie? You have the cooking and serving imps in the kitchen, don't you? Of course. Please, be careful. Lupine bounced on his toes and turned to Belle with a friendly grin. What an odd pair, you and her. Her book's all about old stuffy, plotless fairy stories, and you write exciting, gruesome murders. Missing such a wild faux pas, Harold was white in the face, murmuring. He knew that she was Deborah Vance and still said that to her face. Oh, God. Little prissy Miss Cabbage Patch edits your mails of murder. Ha! Huh. You're just full of such wonderfully vibrant ideas. You can see it in your eyes and in your writing. Lupine looked at Belle with the most adoring smile to accompany the compliment. Whatever could a frump like that bring to the table that you don't already have in spades? Oh! Myers hopped like a child in the classroom, one eager to be called on by the teacher. Miss Belle, do you mind if I tell him? <laughs> Go right ahead! If it's infinitely more fun to hear my accomplishments coming from someone else's mouth. <laughs> Myers dove in. Miss Bell published the first mystery under a pen name. You see, she wasn't confident in her work. Well, the first one wasn't a major hit. Got people excited about the characters. And she started to write more stories. A couple years ago, she got picked up by the chain. That's when I found out about her. That's when I started reading her as well. Get the chain in Arcadia if you know the right guys. Well, eventually Miss Bell felt confident enough to reveal her real name. Miss Bell was a new, brand new writer, but as you know, Miss Vance had been around for about a hundred years looking at those crow's feet, hey now? You only get brow creases that bad, but I'm scowling all the time. Miss Vance has been around for a while longer. So she has a lot of publishing connections. She helped Miss Bell get into the, in into the industry. Faraday bounced the journal against his arm to add more. When Faraday looked up, Lupine was already behind him, peering over his shoulder. Wah wah! Another cute rider. I'm going to get overstuffed with stories tonight. And they're just notes. Ooh, are you caused? Are you casing the joint? <laughs> Faraday decided to pour the attention off as quickly as possible. Harold over there is going to case the joint completely. Get it all salty. I, I, I wouldn't touch a thing I'm not allowed to. It's for the seance. Bell does have some amazing things, though. She's been collecting occult items. That's what I read. You can see some in her gorgeous curio case over there. The loose sculpted goose. You didn't tell me what about what's in the curio case. I didn't look. Well, how about I give you all a tour? This pair of silver rods are supposed to be useful for finding hidden items, dowsing. The spikes in my most recent purse purchase. A silver said it was the tooth of a toxic shark demon. Ooh, Goose eats it stained with blood. Goose grins. Nah, but it's about the size of your fist. Whoa! The set of candles is from the first successful angel summoning. Ooh, Faraday leaned over to whisper to, Her to Harold. That's not a thing, right? Some demons are good liars. These coins are said to be clues that lead to a treasure map. Something for me to keep busy with once I retire, I suppose. 
invite me along for that one. Definitely want treasure to treasure discover on my resume. Down here is a device that reacts to ghostly presence. I plan to test it tonight. Uh, Miss Bell, please don't get your hopes up. Devices like that tend to be completely fake. Unlike Harry here. Faraday mutters under his breath. This last one is a, per this last one is a personal favorite. It's a listening device that can pick up people's inner thoughts that are floating around in the air. I've heard, of, I've heard a lot of very interesting things in the ether. Incredible, but you must hear such strange things. They can be strained and difficult to decipher, but they can, really can push me right through when I'm feeling stuck. Inner mind is such an intriguing place. It's an interesting device. Certainly. With the, others, with the others distracted, Harold shook his head in disbelief. The doorbell chimed again, and Belle smiled as she excused herself. Most of the group stayed crowded around the case, admiring the items. But Faraday and Harold pulled back to talk privately. If you're going to be selling fake seances, then we might as well get into the fake artifact business, too. Demon sharks. Holly curled his fingers, and with both hands pantomimed a lar large pair of jaws. He chomped them on Harold's arm. Cute. For the briefest of moments, Harold smiled. Aww. But it quickly gave way to his usual demeanor. I certainly hope they're all fake. What if one of those were actually someone's severed imp? Could get loose and hurt someone. Speaking of getting loose, maybe we should get to sealing those windows. Wouldn't want to miss dinner because I'm hanging off the roof putting salt down for you. I want to at least meet all the guests first. And we barely found out anything at all about Canterbury. True, but I guess you need to make this as convincing as possible. But looking at the case, she seems like she's the type to believe you can move without rowing. Yeah. Hey! We'll be right back. I'm going off on a little unauthorized tour with a cutie on my arm. Well, no telling, okay? You only get to peek in other people's houses on a rare occasion. And there they go. The lucid lupine slid out of the room before anyone could give any kind of objection. Do we have an entry on lupine yet? Oh, friends with the Fae. We know that much, at least. Lupine flowers. Ian, a Fae, friends with Canterbury. That's particularly interesting. Faye was the only one who claimed he knew Canterbury. It would be great to know what kind of thing Belle's expecting to ask her. I would assume it's something about the murder. Not are confessing some sort of feelings. That would be a lot easier. If not more ethical. Bernadette Belle re-entered the room for just a moment. Oh. Followed by a formally dressed military man. His boots made a loud, crisp sound as he walked. Unless we are graced by Morfei, this is our final guest. Lieutenant Merrick Nowak. The man who now darkened the parlor doorway caused Harry Hawley to narrow his eyes. You know him. You've been at sea as long as I have. You know one, you know them all. Nowak shot Clarice a smile. It's good to see you. It's good to see I have some other guests I can recognize. I want to see your first show on a date with a woman who would be, who would be my future wife. She loves your work. Oh, how sweet! Have you got yourself someone special? Oh no, I'm not interested in that kind of thing. At least, not in real life. Eh? A girl as pretty as you? You're very flattering, Lieutenant. As I said, I'm not really interested. You don't have to come up with excuses. Like I said, you look very... Oh, ho, 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 ho! Evil laugh. You couldn't afford the Duchess's tea, let alone upkeep her lifestyle. L lifestyle? I must go. My flock of peacocks requires good, solid tutting. Uh, Meyer skipped out the door. Hmm. No I can made to follow. Oh. But Faraday moved quickly in the way. Hey, Noak. Didn't you say you were married? But out. What does it matter to you who she is or is interested in? 
No one was talking to you, Porky. Hey now. You're the porky one, what a pig. Oh. Oh. Nuak stepped towards Faraday. He stared him down right back. Well, it just got, uh... Metals in Lieutenant Nuak's chest shifted. Oh. Oh, that's concerning. Opening to reveal a scramble of glaring eyes. Step aside, or I'll step on you. Faraday's ankle jerked, as jerked aside at an odd angle, and he barely kept it from twisting. His hands trembled. Leave her alone. I believe Faraday. Bill chose that moment to return to the parlor. Ah, uh, Lieutenant Nowak, I ask you to, I ask you to please not use your imp on my guests. Of course, Miss Bell. That one is dangerous. They're all dangerous. Not at all. It only helps make it only helps make sure people listen to what they are told. It's essential to have discipline in the military. Hmm. I'm concerned about you already. But we're not in the military. We don't have It's first we added Debbie in here. Merrick Nowak, he him, baby guy, pushy. His imp can force you to do things. Shady as fuck, seems to be... out to do some two-timing. But we're not in the mili- we're not in the military. I'm just giving him a little scare as a joke. I wasn't going to do anything. We're all friends here. Eric shoved Faraday a bit roughly, knocking him off bounds. Harry, Harry managed to catch his arm. Oh, they don't make a scene. I don't think I could if I wanted to. What the hell kind of imp was that? See, he's fine. So you said all imps are dangerous. Of course, any imp could destroy a man. Well, I assume that means yours is quite ferocious. As if you had a demon. I'd have to do my duty by the law. I just... Uh, see things. Noah gave a luck, low, deep chuckle. I'll be sure to beware then. Harry, Harry cleared his throat and tried to pull his friend aside out of the line of fire. We should probably start getting the place sealed. I'll take my assistant with me. And leave you, creepy fucker, alone. Harold gave an apologetic smile to Belle. Bell returned it with a warm glance of her own. It shone. Genuine. There? Oh. I, I keep accidentally landing on that. Thank you, Dr. Ludicale. Ludicale? That Ludicale? Isn't he under house arrest? Laughter interrupted from outside the parlor. Whatever Noak had been about to say, he was sued miles away. His attention had been completely diverted. I'll show you, because I really mean anywhere I'm locked out of. Bam. Dear, so good to see you. The sound of Lieutenant Nowak's voice, Deleuze froze. Turned to walk right back out the way she came. So, Mr. Flowers, do you light for your cigarette? Oh, oh no, you'd be amazed at what I can do with fire. Let's find a big room and I'll show you. Faraday smirked as they left. Huh. Trouble with the missus? Seems like she's not that into you, deckhand. She's just being playful. It's her way. Ow, oh, you're creepy. Holly, let's go. Harold picked up his large container of salt and the pair left the room. I want to tie that guy to an anchor and throw him into a raging storm. Me too, but, uh... As far as I could tell, it seemed like Deleuze would probably help you. So would most of my old crewmates. You know, the sailor ratio is all off here. Too much law. If we called in some of them... Please don't get us in trouble here, Holly. 
promised you weren't going to embarrass me. Sorry. I didn't know that it was embarrassing to stand up for yourself. You know what I mean. Don't get in that guy's face and make a big scene. You might not have a spine, but I can still locate mine. Looks like that could actually hurt us. It could hurt you. <sighs> yeah, I... I agree, he's, he's an ass. He's an ass, but... He's a dangerous ass. Kind that if we push back too hard, we could get in serious trouble. Fine, I'll try not to rile him up. If he starts it, I can't promise I won't fight back. Mom and the rest of the crew didn't raise me to bow to guys like that. Ooh. Um, this gonna be a, uh, just, which do we do first? This will seal the lower level. They took a staircase down and found themselves in a boiler room. Harold got right to work. While Faraday lingered, peering over the railing. The boiler was immense, large enough to fit a carriage inside. Why make a room like this so big? It's a big house. It is quite something to look at. Must cost a lot to heat this place. Can we heat your place more this winter? If this job leads to a few more? Maybe. If you say no, then I'm sleeping in your bed. You stay in your own room. Alright. See on the main floor. Hi, Debbie. Of all the ridiculous. Vance put her hand down on a piece of paper when they entered. Left a small, vibrantly violet violet corner visible. When she moved to grasp the rest of it away. Grasp it the rest of the way, she dropped it. Faraday rushed over to pick it up. Bernadette Bell, tonight we are coming to steal. Vance snatched it away, then crumpled the piece up. I'm sorry, this was a letter that was slipped under the door. Miss Bell didn't want to distract from the party tonight. So she asked me to get rid of it. Uh, yeah. That thing sure looks like some distraction. <laughs> that splattered smile. <laughs> Harold's got, got all the uh, awkward social mood expressions down pat. <laughs> I love it. She gets threats sometimes. It's nothing too serious. Well, I will be finished sealing this place in a bit. It will mean no one can leave or enter. So she should be safe. Vance did not seem mollified by this. She waved her hand. Don't let that soup boil over. Of course. Hell did he fill over the table in his rush to comply? Not you, the help. Rather, the other help. And he deflated. Harold watches an emphasize of a very large oven bumbled by. Oh. Little. Walked slowly as if moving at all was a chore with the heat emanating from it, even from yards away, made Faraday start to sweat. Is it the kitchen imp? It opens its mouth and a whistling filled the room. It removed a tea kettle, poured a cup, and put the kettle back in its mouth. As soon as its mouth was closed, the sound stopped. On the table, a knife-like imp was chopping some form of leafy garnish. Ah! Oh, a knife flying over the, all over the place on its own. Not dangerous whatsoever. Watching that isn't disconcerting in the least. You needn't fear. It's all well under control. So, the height of technology allows people to finally come to terms with their imps. And what have we done? Sold them to the highest bidder. What's next? Legalizing the black market for organs. These are just rental imps. Some hard-working people, who no fault of their own, very much need that money. She considers it mag magnanimous to at least help those people with their debts. She rents from these people often, but they go back to their originators after a month. It's their decision if they want to rent them out again. It's messed up either way. 
Vance turned away to check back in on the other imp that was washing dishes. Dinner is almost ready. If you don't hurry, the food will be cold for everyone. I old finished sealing the windows and the two men left. Seal the upstairs? She must ride in here. Well, good to know at least one room here isn't just for decoration. Not everything has to be utilitarian. It does on a ship. You're such a braggart. Gallivanting off of ocean travels. The rest of us are stuck boarding ourselves up in dry study. It's not like I got a lot of time above deck. I think I had a lovely time working on my tan. Ugh, you don't even have the grace to look back on it fondly. You're a fundamentally ungrateful person. It's like the guy who hasn't washed his own laundry in three months. Oh! You boys already got in here? I came up to open the door for you. I usually leave this room locked. Is this what Dea was trying to get into? I I'm so sorry. I had no idea. We're just about to finish up here. It's quite alright. I leave anything important double locked. You wouldn't have found it even if you tried. Eh. Next manuscript? Uh, hey, old teeth were grinding loud enough for Belle to hear them across the room. Uh, please, Dr. Ludicayo. You don't need to be so on edge all the time. Hmm. I assure you, I'm already aware of your history. But I have the utmost confidence. Uh, well, I think that Faraday can handle this room on his own. I'll just head along, shall I? Faraday sprinkled down a last line of salt along the window sill, and Harry rushed out of the room, cheeks burning with shame. Oh. Belle carefully relocked the room behind them, and tucked the key into her sleeve. So clearly the results of his, uh... research and presentation, and the aftermath, left him in this deep pit of shame. We're barely done before it was time for dinner. Vance's carefully chosen seating took some shuffling to fix. Faraday disregarded the name cards as a suggestion and sat down next to Harold. Duluth switched seats at the last moment, leaving Clarice next to Merrick. Hmm. Lupine didn't even have a name card. He wasn't, in he wasn't invited. But in the end, guests all took their seats at the table. The smell of roasted garlic and juicy turkey already floating down the hall. Vance filled in a cart with a lovely ivy-patterned cloth. Atop it was a large tureen of soup. When she opened the lid, a fragrant cloud of steam billowed out of it, and she dished bowls. Belle glanced to check that everyone had gotten their soup, but started shortly after, prompting the others to begin to eat as well. Clarice, I must apologize. I haven't been, I haven't been able to assist in your character workshops. And it's quite all right. Thank you for understanding. The rewrites are so extensive. It's my responsibility to get you the best script possible. But the director says that he's assembled the finest cast of his career. People are pretty excited for it, even out of town. I've heard my patrons talking about it, but the show's a hot topic in the shipyards, too. They said you might be torn with the show if it does well. Yes, I always wanted to travel around the country. Maybe even around the world. But it's so expensive and scary to do it alone. Ooh, just imagining that glamorous tour. Meeting stars. Getting fan letters ferried over from the ocean just to tell me they love the show. It'd be a dream come true to have so many people see me perform. Lupine ran his spoon around in the bowl, swirling the soup. He made a small whirlpool in it, and the broth splashed over the side. He didn't bring the spoon to his lips. I have a lot to go over this evening, but while we eat, we should try to keep it light. So I think we should ask Goose the question any person would have for someone in their profession. How do you get jobs? Ah, yes. Light. That's exactly what I was thinking. 